welcome to this newest episode of Music Design. Today, let's talk about personally one of my favorite video game songs, Besed Island from Final Fantasy X. Besed was composed by Masashi Hamauzu, who at that time was hired by longtime series composer Nobuo Iematsu to co-write the music for the game. Final Fantasy X is actually the first Final Fantasy game where Iematsu was not the sole composer. As a result, the soundtrack has a variety of different styles that differs from the previous games. Hamauzu's music focuses more on classical and ambient music, with a focus on piano as the primary instrument in his songs. You'll often use dissonance frequently, as you'll hear in the Besed Island theme, to create an interesting effect on the listener. Let's dive into this song. Besed Island is certainly a unique song in many areas. The song is in 4-4 time with a steady rhythm of 109 beats per minute. And if you look at the length of the tune, it's around 2 minutes and 21 seconds before the loop point, which is around average for a video game song. Now if you look at the sections for the song, we have three main sections. Section 1, Section 2, and then Section 3. And you can also see there's transitions between these sections. We have the intro, and then the transition 1 and transition 2. These transitions help provide a bit of respite and allows Hamauzu to start to develop into the next section. We certainly have a variety of quirky instruments in Besed Island. Let's start with the traditional instruments. We first have this lead electric piano playing the first chord progression, and then the second E piano will play this interesting ostinato part, which we'll cover shortly. The piano will be our lead instrument, and then for these next three instruments, they'll all be bit crushed in some way. This is what makes this song strangely appealing to listen to due to its dissonance here. A strings ensemble will give padding underneath all the instruments. Lastly, we have the third E piano near the end of the song, and then the percussion containing the kick and the snare drum and the stick hits. The said island immediately sets a calming atmosphere, starting with the electric piano. In fact, the first chord it plays is an open G suspended chord. All these chords will have that same basic shape. Suspended chords do not have a third in them, which will not allow them to sound major or minor. Without the third, the sound of the song sounds more ambient and non-conclusive. While the E piano follows this chord progression, the second E piano will fade in with this ostinato pattern. Firstly, I find this pattern to be the defining feature of this song. It gives the song extra motion and a touch of melancholia. And if we look inside the pattern, it's constructed off a D major scale. But if you remember the first electric piano chords, they were based off of G. So that's why this doesn't sound completely happy in D major together. In section 1, a lot more instruments are suddenly added. Fortunately, the two instruments that we had before are retained here, and I also added an additional instrument in this first pattern. This is just so, so that it can sound a bit different from the last pattern. For the new parts, the piano is the first that stands out. It'll play mostly octaves in the D or A major-ish scale. Now let's add the bass. The bass is made up of two basses. The first is a crushed bass like this. while the second pattern is more simple. That jumps up an octave too. Now onto the two more unusual instruments. The first crushed synth is a weird staccato pattern.
Once again, it provides a weird dissonance that adds to the atmosphere of the song. The second is more percussive in nature. As you can see, I combined a variety of different sounds to fit what the original song sounded like. Functionally, in the song, it acts as sort of a kick drum. If we add these stick hits, you can see how these hits will fill in the missing beats in the low hits. And I also added a kick drum. I find these stick hits to add such great syncopation to this song. In the second half of section 1, the strings ensemble will enter, providing background padding. Looking inside the pattern, these chords are pretty condensed. Notice how a lot of the time I carry through some of these notes into these chord changes, like this A for example. This helps many times to transition between these chords smoothly. I also combine three different strings, the brighter one, the darker one, and the solo violin. The last half of the strings will steadily ascend upward, eventually holding on this high A note. Let's take a listen to the intro in section 1 together. The first transition works so well to ease the tension and provide cool, relaxing piano chords. The second E piano is still motoring on, and all that's left to accompany the piano is the bass, which plays the same pattern as before. Looking inside the piano, the composer utilizes major 7th chords, along with 6 intervals for extra melancholic impact. Also, note the use of rolled chords. For section 2, literally the only instrument that is added is this new drum beat. Every other instrument stays exactly the same. The drums are super simple, using only a kick and a snare in a simple pattern. And they'll end with this ride on the cymbals at the end. Then for this second transition, the piano pattern is actually exactly the same as the first transition, but we also have some new instruments. You'll also see that the second E piano will fade in at this part right here. Now in the bass, you'll notice that they'll play this ominous bell sound. I use some different synth bells to showcase the distance. This is just the crushed bass, then the simple bass on top, then we have this metal hit, second one. And finally the last one.
the last new instrument we have is the third E piano. Check the pattern here. We have a major third interval with a short staccato sound, followed by the minor third. The minor third actually gives an extra dissonance to this section. And I also adjusted the filter and the volume over time in this. Let's take a listen to section two with these two transitions. Section 3 is such a great section for a variety of reasons. For the first time, the bass will sustain their notes following the chord progression of the section. Then the E piano on top will continue its ostinato pattern. Following that, we have the piano lead. Down below, the composer also added additional notes emphasizing this fourth interval. I also added a delay on this, which you can hear. In the second half of section 3, I added a higher duplicate of the second electric piano. <music> Lastly, we'll finish up with the strings ensemble. Looking at the pattern itself, we'll continue the theme of condensed chords, but strangely, this part sounds so open. Just take a listen to these strings soloed. And let's take a final listen to section 3 all together. The Said Island is one of the more unique songs within the Final Fantasy universe, and it is well beloved of fans for many reasons. Hama Uzu deserves great credit for creating such an outstanding piece for his first time in this popular franchise. I would like to give a huge thanks to all my current Patreons, who have supported music design and encouraged me to keep going. These include Kevin Huin, Sam Hanley, Manish Corona, and Alan Brown. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next episode of Music Design.